Okay everybody, hello and welcome back. This is the part two of our test bench build log that we are doing. I'm very excited. Introducing Sai again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again. So Sai, what do you think I need to do next? Apart from obviously cleaning the CPU, because oh, some lucky fingers about that. So we've got, oh, we've just good. installed the graphics card. Mm -hmm. um, we've got the, oh, we'll actually put that on the side here so people can see it. Um, so we've installed the graphics card, uh, the power supply for the graphics card. Yep, perfect. The uh, power supply for the motherboard, the whatever this is, power supply for the CPU. Uh, yeah, well, your 24 pin. Yep. Cool. And and I don't want, I need to know what we do next. So. Um, you've only got two bits left. You've only got your storage and the cooler. After that shenanigans, we have now screwed the uh, SD card into the SSD bay, the proper bay that it's actually meant to go in. And you're about to see now that we can just simply, sim simply, you're about to see now we can simply slot this bad boy straight into there. Boom, done. Then we need our SATA cable. That's gonna plug in like so, like that. And then we're gonna find out where we're gonna to need to put it later. And we're gonna get our and we're gonna get our cable here, which I cable managed earlier. Pop this bad boy in here, and then pop this directly into the peripheral SATA. There, boom. So that is now ready to go. We can then Feed this bad boy through. The best place to probably put it through would be here, because I believe that that section is next to the set port. Also, this can be plugged in now. So this can be plugged in on the lower one here, like so. Boom. So that's plugged in. Those are all plugged in. Fantastic. See, this is why I'm here. I'm learning. No, of course, as of well. course, yeah. This is part of the entertainment of the video, is of the fact course, that yeah, I'm going to yeah, get yeah, things yeah. wrong. Yeah. And Nick is here to tell me to not do things wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we've changed the plan. We're going to put the uh, water cooler, the closed loop water cooler, here. If you can see, there. Very much. <laughs> <laughs> So for those of you guys who don't know, thermal paste is the bond that bonds the cooler of the CPU to the actual CPU itself. Uh, what this essentially does is means that you get better, more efficient cooling and you should never, ever, ever install a cooler without thermal paste on it, ever. Right? Correct. <laughs> there are a lot of different methods. People sometimes do a P dot, sometimes people do a line. Um, Just don't use. Just don't use too much or too little. I would say very little. <laughs> yeah, like that size, that size there. If you've got maybe a slightly wider CPU, maybe use a tiny bit more, but other than that, you don't need to, to use any more than that. That's like the perfect amount. This is why I was dreading this bit, and this is why we've got Nick over here, because he's amazing at doing this kind of stuff. He, used to be. he worked his way up from the bottom to come to the top and down on PC. <laughs> indeed, I did. <laughs> because my Italian accent, you know, it's, it can make a big difference. It is. We will be using Nico's Italian accent in many ways on the channel. We just haven't decided how yet. That is how you install a Corsair H75. There's a complicated way and an easy way, and we're going to do it the complicated way, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> I do make mistakes, but it's okay because we've rectified every mistake that we have made and made the, the, our test bench even better because of it. This, this, this test bench now has part, it has soul. Just because it's actually managed to get built in the first place by, <laughs> by me, mostly. I'd say maybe like 60% me. Yeah, you can be proud of your build. I'm proud of you. Yeah, thank you. It's been five years since I've built a PC and I've never built one with a water cooler in it. We can go bowling. <laughs> we can go bowling with Nico. Okay. People who get that, leave a like on the video. <laughs> and with that fan plugged in, I do believe the case is actually finished. Everything is done. So let's have a quick look around the case and see how terrible a job I've done. So this is the cable management at the back. It's actually not too bad. Um, I've seen way worse before, so that's all right. Um, there's no need to kind of adjust that too badly because obviously, 
well, we're going to uh, be uh, changing things in and out. And this is the computer itself. Um, which has got easy access to the graphics card. Um, we have decided that this is going to be a uh, entirely graphics card based test bench and we're going to use a proper test bench for doing CPUs and things like that. Okay, so with everything finished, we have finally benchmarked the PC. We have got Windows 10 on it and I now get to do the most satisfying bit. You ready? Hang on, wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, the PC is completed. So you may notice that I've changed clothes, that's because it is a brand new day. Um, you can always tell if I'm going home on a Thursday because I'll be wearing trackies. Yeah, check it out. But that doesn't matter, we've got our three benchmarks. Our benchmark being Batman at 1080p using the artificial benchmark from there. Far Cry using the artificial benchmark and we're doing that one at 1440p. And we're also running Eugene Valley at 1080p as well. So for the Batman benchmark, we've got a minimum FPS score of 74, a maximum of 132, and the temperature reading was on average about 68 degrees Celsius. For the Far Cry Primal benchmark, we've got an average score of 38 frames per second, not bad on 1440p. We also got a minimum FPS score of 32 and a maximum of 44. This is performing a lot better than I'm expecting. Remember, this is Quad HD, so it is performing very, very well under 1440p. And for the final Far Cry temperature, we did hit a little bit hotter than the Batman temperature at 70 degrees Celsius. For our Valley benchmark, we got a score of 5,051, a minimum FPS of 47, a maximum FPS of 221.1, and a average temperature of around 67 degrees Celsius. This is a very good score and something I'd expect to see from the 970 Turbo Edition. We will probably add more tests in the future, but for now, we're just gonna keep it simple with three tests, one 1440p, two 1080p's, one artificial, and two from actual game. So that's kind of it. This is the test bench, as you can sort of, well, you can't see because the uh, 4K screen's in the way, but this is, the, this is it. This is what we'll be using to test all of our GPUs in the future. It's, it turns out pretty good. The cooling is very good. I was expecting the temperatures to be a little bit hotter on the card, which means that something in there is working very, very well. We haven't applied any overclock to the CPU. It's still running at four gigahertz and everything else in there is standard. We won't be overclocking any of the graphics cards when we do these tests. We'll just be keeping them just as they come out of the box so that you guys can know what you can get from standard. Thank you very much guys for watching. Leave a like for us if you enjoyed these two build log videos. More videos coming for you very, very soon. Don't forget to stay subscribed and check us out on Twitter as well. Roll the outro. So we don't really have any bloopers uh, to show you this week, unfortunately, as um, there weren't actually that many bloopers going on. But I can show you Ted, our resident punch bag, who just sits here with his nose cut off um, for fairly unknown reasons. But, um, you know, anybody's feeling like they need to let off some steam, then we can just simply have a go at our punch bag. So here's Ted. <laughs> he's, he's a thing of beauty, he really is.